The kitchen floor is hard and the tile is cold. Why not just go to the nice soft bed, I asked. Jason looked at Nathaniel. Nathaniel answered the question. Jason has made love in a bed and only a bed since he started being with Purdy. I frowned, then looked at Jason, still in a loose hug with me. I understand no shower or bath sex. Mermaids have trouble retaining human form in water, but nothing but the bed. He shook his head. Standard positions, too? I made it a question. He nodded. My eyes widened. Oh, Jason, I'm sorry. I didn't know. <laughs> I hugged him tighter. He moved back so he could see my face. With all the bad news I've had today, and you look that stricken that my girlfriend would only do standard bed sex? <laughs> I tried to put into words what I was thinking, not always my best thing. You love sex. You're good at it. Why, gee, thanks. He grinned. I gave him a look but kept talking. I was going to finish this thought, damn it. Sex is one of the most personal things we do as people. To have someone who says they love you limit how you express yourself in the bedroom is like a small death. It kills the soul. The grin left his face, then his eyes. He stared at me, and there was Jason, and there Jason was that part of him that he hid for most people. Heck, that he hid most of the time. He let me see that there was a good mind and a deep thinker inside those usually smiling blue eyes. It made him look sad and older, but I valued that look. I valued that he let me see him all the way down. How did you get to be so smart? He asked softly. I have smart friends that give me good advice sometimes. I smiled. Sometimes I even take it. He smiled back and ran his hands down my back. So, you'd really let me pick where we make love? I nodded. Just because I haven't had a choice in a while, yes. What if I want something too freaky? Then I'll say no, and you can back it down a little. His eyes were that solemn look again. He searched my face. You mean it. I put my hands on either side of his face and nodded. I try not to say things I don't mean, Jason. I put a soft kiss at the end of the sentence. He moved his hand lower on my back to press us closer together, close enough that I could feel that his body was already happier than when we hugged last. <laughs> He closed his eyes and took a breath. He looked at Nathaniel. Do you have a preference? You're the guest. Jason lifted me off the floor with a hug. We were both short enough that I was in no danger of hitting the door jam. I love you guys. You make me feel less weird about myself. <laughs> Why? Because we're weirder, I asked. No, he said, laughing up at me. Because your relationship works. It just flat works for you guys. You make me feel that out there somewhere is someone weird enough to make me happy. I'd rather not do the bathroom, Nathaniel said. It takes forever to dry my hair. <laughs> Jason let me down, so I was standing on the floor again. I'm leaning towards the living room. There are chairs, and the couch has a back and arms, Nathaniel said. How sturdy is the coffee table? Not that sturdy. <laughs> I'd caught on. No, not sturdy enough to have sex on. Straight in the living room, move, start in the living room, move to the bedroom, Jason said, making it a question. I looked at Nathaniel. He nodded and gave a little shrug. Deal, I said. And you'd just scream if I just said, we have to stop now, wouldn't you? <laughs> Chapter 2. They had a disagreement on whether I should leave my heels on or take them off. Nathaniel voted for on. Jason wanted off. Jason's point, I want to go down on her and the heels will hurt. Nathaniel's point, yeah, the heels hurt. What's your point? <laughs> I settled the argument this way. Whoever's doing the oral sex on me gets their preference on the shoes. Lose the shoes, Jason said. And there was a look in his face that tightened things low in my body without him touching me at all. I lost the shoes. They lay on their side in the dimness of the living room. The only light was that what spilled in from the kitchen doorway. I stood in front of the couch while they moved the coffee table far to one side of the room. Jason came back and dropped to his knees in front of me. He gazed up at me with one half of his face lit and the other in darkness. The look in the one eye I could see clearly made me shiver. Nathaniel came to the end of the couch and took his shorts off in one smooth motion. My pulse was in my throat at the sight of him nude in the darkened room. He let the shorts fall to the floor. Jason's hand slid to my legs underneath my skirt, and I was back to staring down at him. His hands caressed the hose up to my thighs, went up oh so gently until he found the lace tops of the thigh high. He traced the very top of the lace, trailing fingertips over the rise and fall of the fabric. He rolled fingers back and forth where the hose elastic had rolled down and back. No matter how careful you were, if you had any thighs at all, the hose always did that. But he treated it like what it was, not an imperfection, but something different to play with. His fingers slid around that edge, brushing the very upper edges of my thighs. He rubbed his thumbs on that warm inside hollow that frames a woman's groin. He massaged my thighs, but it was the pressure of his thumbs that helped draw my legs further apart. Made me want to stand so he could reach what he wanted and what I wanted him to reach. 
Nathaniel came in behind me. Without the coffee table, there was room enough between me and the couch. His arms wrapped around me, pinning my arms against my upper body. The feel of his nakedness pressed against the back of my skirt was amazing. Then he let me feel the strength in his body as he held me, held me so tight. It sped my pulse faster, caught my breath in my throat. So strong, I whispered. So trapped, he breathed against my face. He squeezed harder, just the sight of bruising my arms against me, but I didn't tell him to stop. I loved knowing that I was trapped. If he had meant me harm, I couldn't have stopped him. My gun was trapped under my arm, digging into my body. All it would take was Jason to grab my legs, and I was trapped. I hadn't much liked that I enjoyed things like this. In fact, I'd hated it. But lately, thanks in part to sharing emotions with Nathaniel, who loved bondage and submission, I was acknowledging that fantasy was okay. That I didn't need to analyze why in real life being trapped made me fight like hell and do all of my power to destroy the ones trapping me, but in sexual fantasy, I liked being trapped a little. In a safe place with people I trusted, it was more than just exciting. What are you doing up there to make her react like that, Jason said. His hands had gone still against my thighs, holding her very, very tightly, Nathaniel said in a voice that showed the strain of holding me tight. Jason's fingers suddenly dug into my flesh from gentle to bruising in an instant. I whispered, yes. Is that the game we want to play? He asked it, and his voice had changed deeper, darker, for lack of a better word. I do, Nathaniel said. Jason's finger pressed harder into my thighs so that I cried out and told him, enough, enough. That's her safe word, Nathaniel said. I've already stopped, Jason said, but I haven't stopped, have I? Nathaniel whispered. No, I said, voice breathy. He was holding tight enough to be trapped, but not quite tight enough to hurt. It was a fine edge to walk, but Nathaniel knew how to walk it. Do I rip the panties off or take them off, Jason asked. Rip, Nathaniel said, and it was almost a growl. I said, please. Please what, Jason asked. Off, I whispered. He ripped the satin panties in one harsh move that jerked my body. Nathaniel tightened his grip on me until it was hard to breathe. I whispered, he's up. He eased until he was back where he'd been, tight but not too tight, trapped but not hurt. Of all the forms of sex that I'd found, BDSM took the most trust, the most communication. Jason pushed my skirt up until he bared me to the light from the kitchen. How rough can I be? There was no sex in the tone of his voice. He was truly asking. Start easy, Nathaniel said. She'll let you know. I realized that Jason had never given me oral sex before. I'd gone down on him, but he'd never had a chance to return the favor. He used his hands to spread my thighs wider. He let me feel the strength in his hands, but not as hard as he'd been when I told him to ease up. The sensation of being bound by the sheer strength of him was amazing. There was no need of ropes or chains when you could feel how terribly strong they both were. Jason's hands were harsh, but he leaned in towards me as if he were going to give the gentlest of kisses. The juxtaposition of the harsh and the gentle left my mind not knowing how to react. Then his tongue slid across me and there was no conflict, there was only sensation. He dug his fingers into that space inside my thighs, so harsh I cried out. He forced my legs further apart, Nathaniel lifted me. I could feel his shoulders and chest flex until I was suddenly off the ground. It allowed Jason to spread my legs more, use the strength of his fingers to force me wider. Jason plunged his tongue inside me, sudden and abrupt. I cried out for him and he leaned back enough to gaze at the line of my body. It was as if I could feel the weight of his gaze because it made me look down at the same time he looked up. God, he said that look. What look, I managed to say before Nathaniel squeezed harder and I had no breath to talk. 